Gens is charged with murder for the death of Jane Beshera. It is a story we broke on 7 Action News at noon. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Joanne Purton. And I'm Carolyn Clifford. Joe Gens faced a judge this afternoon through video arraignment. 7 Action News reporter Val Clark was in the courtroom today. She is live downtown. And Val, walk us through exactly what happened today. It's been a roller coaster like it has been for two months, Carolyn. Leading up to this arraignment, you'll remember Joe Gens made all kinds of statements. Statements, admissions, even claims. Well, after getting our very first look at this warrant today, we now know that police do not believe he acted alone. Count one, homicide, murder, first degree premeditated, penalty, felony, life without parole, count two, conspiracy. The crimes are no surprise to him. Still, Joseph John Gentz looked bewildered during his arraignment today. He was on camera from the Dickerson detention facility. The formal charges read at 36th District Court. The only elephant in either room. Who do authorities believe he conspired with to kill Jane Bashera? There wasn't even a hint in court, but the felony complaint and warrant provide some insight. Spelling out the conspiracy charge, did conspire together with another known individual to commit murder. Place of offense, Annot Street in Detroit, where Mrs. Bashera's body was discovered, and the Middlesex address in Gross Point Park, where Jane lived with her husband, Bob. Other details are contained in this mountain of discovery the prosecution handed over to Gent's attorney. But her first order of business is securing a competency evaluation for her client. Competency evaluation. That's the same as the psych evaluation and what all is that, that is, and it's through the forensic center, and it's just to make sure that uh, mentally and emotionally he's able to assist me with the uh, preparation of his case. Are you doubting that? I don't know. I'm not the psychiatrist or a psychologist. If I see anything, uh, I've read articles in your papers that tell me that everyone says he has some mental problems, and since I'm not qualified to make that decision, I thought I'd leave that to the experts. Have you had a chance to talk to him in person yet? Yes. I talked to him Saturday at jail at Dickerson. Tell us how he's doing, what he's, he's saying he's, about his situation. He is concerned, and he's worried, and he's anxious, and that's to be expected. And Joe Gentz continues to be held, only now it's without bomb, bond. Now, Bob Beshara's address, but not his name, was part of this warrant. We will have to wait and see if another shoe drops. I can tell you that at least three police officers from Gross Point Park were in the courtroom for the arraignment. And here's using the words of the court staff. They say those officers flew out of this courtroom when it was all over. Reporting live from downtown Detroit, I'm Val Clark, 7 Action News. Val, Carolyn, back to you. Val, real quick question for you. We have reported that he has the IQ of a third grader. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary on that video arraignment? I mean, we were all watching it. Did you notice anything when you were in court? You know, as I said, Carolyn, he did, he did look a little bewildered, and certainly he wasn't you know, uh, surprised by any of this. He's been talking for months. Now, again, uh, IQ is one thing. If he has the uh, wherewithal of even a seven-year-old, children do testify. The judge, the, the, uh, usually a threshold is, do you know right from wrong? So he'll get that psych evaluation, and then this case will go forward. All right. Thank you much, Val. We do have a few more details right now on the investigation. A competency hearing or psychiatric evaluation, as we just mentioned, typically takes about six weeks. So a preliminary exam for Gens will likely be postponed until after that happens.